I have a hard time defining myself. When I was young, I barely had any friends because of just how different I was. My interests were passionate and obscure, and I was terrible at communicating. My mind had so many thoughts at once, and I could never find the right words. Keep in mind, I had serious anxiety issues that practically made me mute, limiting my communication even further. It's like I was the perfect concoction of being unable to connect to other people. That's what led me to making a YouTube channel because no one in my personal life was capable of truly understanding me. Even then, the ever-growing amount of ideas in my head was overwhelming, and properly realizing those ideas into something tangible and understandable was even more difficult. The troubles of being different, trying to express yourself, and failing at communication are problems I understand on a deep, instinctual level that I have experienced my entire life. All of this to say that I relate to Rin wholeheartedly and sincerely. If you've experienced similar struggles to what I've just described, I hope you get something out of this retrospective. In this video, I will recap Rin's route from beginning to end while inserting relevant experiences or opinions. I've made a video about Hanukkah already and I will inevitably cover the same material, so I'll just recap quickly what happened up until then. If you want the full coverage, you can watch my Hanukkah video. After that, I will cover the moments in Chapter 1 that only relate to Rin, though, and that means I will not introduce anyone else. I expect you to have already read Katwa Shoujo. Thank you for understanding. Before getting into the retrospective, let's just quickly celebrate the fact Katwa Shoujo was recently released on Steam as of the 16th of August 2024. Now that it's more accessible, I hope that'll get more people interested in playing this incredible visual novel. One more thing, I want to talk about this retrospective in a meta sense for a bit. I have an actual point to this whole video, something to take away from after watching, or at least Rin's route does, so uh, trudge through the more recap heavy portions at the beginning and watch until the end. I say this because I'm self-conscious that it'll feel like I'm just recapping Rin's route or if it was too boring. The ethics of video essay retrospectives is a topic for another video, but uh, yeah, yeah, I hope you learn something at the end. Okay, let's not waste any more time and just get straight into it. Here is Rin's route from Katwa Shoujo. Let's quickly speedrun the intro of Katwa Shoujo just so everyone's caught up. Our boy Hisao gets a heart attack while confessing his love to Iwanako. He is hospitalized and has some repressed anger about being forced to attend a school for the disabled. He has an arc of getting used to the normalcy of Yamaku Academy, and we get introduced to a bunch of characters. The teacher Muto, Shizune and Misha, Lillian Hanako, Emi, and now Rin. So, afternoon classes went by and he is with Muto. All of a sudden, Misha comes barging in. Uh, she urgently needs some plywood and Muto might know where there could be some. He said the art room has some, but Misha says she doesn't have any time to go there. That's when Muto hints that Hisao is free and he accepts the help. Muto smugly responds he has something to do now and he leaves for the art room. He enters and sees a peculiar sight. It's of a girl wearing the boy's uniform using her legs to eat her lunch. By the way, this is the first time we hear the most bangin' boppiest track in the game. Parity is a classic. She simply says, hello. Her name is Rin. She says she won't shake hands with him, but at least they know each other now. With her deadpan manner of talking, Hisao couldn't tell if it was a joke or not. She says she'll continue eating her lunch even though it's the afternoon, and it bothers her there's no word for a meal between lunch and dinner. She tries guessing what Hisao's disability is and immediately says it must be something to do with his pants. Hisao, taken aback by this, correct her by blurting out his heart is the problem, it's arrhythmia. She was a bit disappointed saying it could have been more scandalous. I'm being very detailistic about this conversation for a few reasons. First, Rin is a fascinating character and I don't want to skip over any of her bizarre and hilarious dialogues. Second, it's funny how Sao, who's been trying not to make a big deal about everyone's disabilities, here comes a character who just asks about them directly with no shame. Third, it's important her first impression is impactful. It's the same with all the characters, but for Rin, it's hard not to show instead of tell. The only way to describe her in one word is, she is unique. So he gets his plywood, converses with Rin a bit more, and then he leaves. Then, a Misha jump scare. He asks why he was so late and sees who might be inside. Shizune is seething at the sight. How could a student use a table that way? Rin walks out as she asked her progress on the art project for the festival. She says she'll think about it, which doesn't really appease Shizune. They walk off and says it's true she needs to finish the project or there will be dire consequences, like the end of the world. As Hisao ponders about the possible apocalypse, she asks for help, bringing paint cans to her mural. 
While he was carrying the paint cans, the nurse found him. He asked about his medication and current condition, but also if he was exercising or not. He jokingly said he's been doing some improvised lifting with the paint cans, but he drags him aside to basically ask him to take his health more seriously. This is kind of funny looking back, because in many routes, he doesn't really exercise or pay attention to his health much. He responds saying he might find his spy if he goes to the track tomorrow and then just leaves. Earlier, Rin mentioned she usually ate lunch on the roof with her friend who did sports. Spoilers, but we have met her before and they are the same person. I'm really enjoying the web of connections being hinted here right in the first chapter. It's pretty cool. So they walked the mural and it's a cavalcade of lines and grotesque looking faces at the moment. Hard to tell what it's going to be. Rin rambled about how the painting was going as Hisao was half listening to her. Then Hisao was about to ask the elephant in the room and Rin knows what he's about to ask, responding, she's an easy person to talk to. She can paint without her hands because of her feet. She is used to it now. She asks for opinions on the painting and if it looks flat. Hisao says don't all paintings look flat and she means flat as in no substance or meat, just like some people she knows personally and just before she name drops them Hisao interrupts. Damn it, we'll never know. She asks him to mix some paints together and he does that. But he quickly realizes working with her is difficult, especially with her vague instructions and obscure way of referring to things. This is a Rin problem and an artist problem. When having a vision in your head, I feel like you have to be impeccably affluent to even begin to explain the concept in words. That's why they say weird things like, it has to look like the color when you wake up and you know you saw the meaning of life in that dream but can't remember it. Apparently, Rin says, that color isn't blue. Sao just stares at her while she's painting. She doesn't seem bothered by it. They do this until night. Some other day, not the same day, Sao feeling kind of bad about himself for not contributing to the festival, he walks over to the mural and after Rin is not noticing him for 15 minutes, she stares at his crotch and asks for help mixing paints. Sao comments on how effortlessly she can maneuver her body and legs around to be able to paint. She really does need to become a contortionist to work around her ability. They start talking about a blind boy in the art club. She doesn't know why he goes there, but he goes there and paints, just doing things he can do because he can't. These deep sounding nuggets of thoughts are really the appeal of Rin's dialogues. Esau forgot why he's even here, so he's about to leave. He asks if she's seen Lily so he can tell her where Hanako went, to which she comments she's the mystery toilet girl. She calls her this for going to the bathroom during class five times. Looking at Hanako makes her hungry. I, I can see Hanako doing something like that. Also, I already ate. Ayo! Nisao seeing her forcing herself to finish the painting before eating dinner finds her passion admirable and despite her oddities, she is pretty cool after all. Time skip, so surprise surprise, Rin was on the rooftop as well to eat lunch with them. Here on the rooftop, Hisao gets a moment of clarity, feeling the winds and seeing the landscape of Yamaku's surrounding town. It's calm and he's feeling optimistic. As he sits down next to the girls and seeing Rin with her feet makes him think about normalcy again. Will he get used to sights like this? Does that mean he will stop being normal or will this become the new normal? So they have a fun conversation, Hisao thanks Emmy for the lunch and wouldn't mind eating with them again. Asao visits the library, meets Yuko, bless her soul, and then glances at Hanako reading a book. After a while, he grabs a couple books, brings them to his dorm, then goes outside to buy some supplies. But instead finds Lily. So Hisao assists Lily in her shopping and they exit. But wait, what's that? A silhouette appears and it's a real actual cryptid, aka Rin Tezuka. They do happen to know each other. At this point, I'm really wondering if the writers did have every heroine meet every other heroine, like every possible permutation. Hisao asks, why is she here? To which Rin doesn't even know. Lily does not respond. She doesn't know how to interact with Rin at all, really. Hisao says she must be in town for a specific place since she isn't going back to school and Rin says he must be a mind reader. Lily interrupts their conversation by proposing they head back together, to which she agrees to. Rin suddenly remembers it's Friday and has to finish her mural. It's the day right before the festival. All his how does is grab some books from the library to read and that's it. He gets approached by Emmy, who's helping Rin, and for a lack of things to do, joins them anyways. When Emmy tried getting paint from the top shelf, Hisao teased her for her height. It's a weak spot for her. It's fitting she wouldn't let a tall cupboard stop her. Going back to the mural, Emmy says the night nurses found Rin in the fetal position on the ground 
sound in the middle of the night, to which Hisao responds she does come off as unhinged sometimes. They have trouble categorizing Rin besides calling her unique. I have to give props to the writer for capturing such an interesting character type, even though she is indescribable by general adjectives, she feels like she has some internal logic no one else understands, which is so impressive to put into writing. There aren't many other characters in media that are similar to Rin. They walk back and she talks about bad luck happening to talks about works in progress, which is why artists are perpetually unlucky. That's why this blind boy in her class is what all artists should strive to be. This was the same story we'd heard last time, which Emmy has heard of as well. So anyways, the Prussian blue is missing and Emmy goes back to get it while Hisao watches her paint while reading a book. He ponders the reason on why do art. It seems something incomprehensible. Maybe Rin paints and Emmy runs just out of spite of their disability. It fits Emmy, but Rin isn't as headstrong as she is. Hisao never had any passionate creative impulses, so he just doesn't get it. Hisao mixes some paint for her when an old man approaches. I was taken aback at this guy's sprite. Seeing Rin and him side by side, it is a stark contrast. Muto is kind of the same deal, but yeah, they put a lot more detail in the non-heroine characters because they're not meant to be cutesy and young. So, Mr. Nomia here asks if he's interested in art. Isao blurts out a vague interest in the art club. He just wants to be in a club, so art it is then, I guess. Isao asks about Nomia. He wants to introduce Rin to other people in the art world, but Rin doesn't seem to be excited by it. She doesn't like talking about art, because art itself is already a form of communication. Art has many purposes, but one of the main ones is that it can communicate messages that can't be communicated through words. She likens the analogy of talking about art to talking about being bored talking about boredom begets more boredom. Hisao doesn't have much to say about the mural, Rin retorting saying because it is about nothing. She just didn't have any ideas at first and still doesn't. She realizes she's thinking too much which is bad and shakes the thoughts out of her head. That's why she lets Emmy and Hisao be with her while painting. They talk so much about nothing that it lets her not think. Maybe she's trying to achieve a flow state in some way by not thinking and she's just using Emmy and Hisao for it. Anyways, while Hisao is staring at Rin painting in a mural, a question pops in his head. Where do ideas come from? He feels Rin was lying earlier. Even if she doesn't recognize it, something must have driven Rin to subconsciously paint this mural the way she did was quote unquote no idea the idea a logical paradox Hisao doesn't want to discuss logic with Rin, so he doesn't say anything. She paints until night and declares she's done. No celebration or anything. Just a pat on the back and they head back to their dorms. On the day of the festival, Kenji interrupts you as always and you tell him you joined the art club. He said they'll lure him in with their fancy pants arty stuff and then BAM! and doesn't elaborate. Hisao goes outside and sees Rin who's immobilized from painting all afternoon yesterday. Nomi's art friends came by and looked at her mural. He was happy it got done on time, but Rin questions, is it really done? That's an interesting question. For any art, it can never really be finished like other things with quantitative results. Maybe the objective is art is so that the message is communicated properly, but that's kind of vague. We finally get to see the whole mural and Hisao is having a hard time identifying objects in the painting, let alone its meaning. Personally, I think it's some kind of exploration of the human body with all these body parts around. Besides that, I have no idea. Hisao asks about that. If she had no idea yesterday, then why did she paint it this exact way? Rin cannot answer that. She's bad at explaining things. She says almost annoyed. She just wanted to paint a mural. While Hisao understands art is meant for exchanging ideas, he doesn't understand how to interpret art and get those ideas. Hisao asks if Rin is going to do anything during the festival. She says no, so Hisao accompanies her sitting down. Hisao likes her company. She has an odd aura that makes it comfortable to be around her even when they're silent. They go people watching. Some stop and look at the mural, but don't stay for too long. Hisao says they seem to like it. Rin doesn't answer immediately. She seems to take a long while to choose her words, even though it'll be gibberish anyways. I relate to this way too much. I take too long to say the simplest of senses, while others can go on talking without a single break. I have no idea how people do it, but I guess I need more conversation practice. She said she wanted to make a mural where you could look at it and think of nothing, but that didn't make sense. So it became a mix of this and that like someone vomited butterflies on the wall. As always, Rin is very obscure with her meaning.
Esau looks beyond himself and realizes this is the pinnacle of social failure. It's a sunny day outside and a festival is going on, but they're just sitting like bums doing nothing. She asks, what are clouds? Could they be thoughts of the sky? Esau indulges her thought. It's water vapor. Eventually, we will all die. The water in our bodies soak into the ground, flow into the seas, and become clouds. I gotta say, when it comes to talking to Rin, you have to be the patient and philosophical type, because a question like, what are clouds, won't evoke much response in many people and shake it off as a dumb thought, but Hisao here just goes with the flow. Turns out they've been sitting in front of the mural during the festival for six straight hours. Do they want to do anything else? Neither does, and they continue sitting. I personally would be way too restless to actually do this, but yeah, that sounds like a nice day. After an accidental nap, Hisao woke up right when the fireworks started blasting. Rin was also fast asleep and has want to be woken up. The fireworks don't bother her. She really does like fireworks. They're loud and bright to catch your attention, but disappear when you look at them. Hisao tries to one-up her floweriness, saying that fleeting moment of a bright firework is like life and the history of everything. It all goes away in the blink of an eye. Rin is speechless. Well, the fireworks ended and they awkwardly stand around. They bid each other goodbye. They spend the day sitting and doing nothing. They both had nothing better to do, so I guess it was inevitable. Before Isao goes back to his dorms, he could still feel Rin's warmth linger before disappearing into the cold night. Monday morning class. Muto comes in late. They're discussing particle physics. A while later, he sees Emmy vroom down the hallway again and bumps into Hisao. They pick up the printouts Emmy dropped, and this lets her ask Hisao out for lunch. On the rooftop with Rin, Hisao goes along with it as Emmy offers to buy bread, running to the cafeteria. Leaving Emmy to crash into someone else, Hisao goes to the roof. She finds Rin laying on her back, Hisao asking, what is she doing? She's obviously laying on her back, so Hisao asks, why is she laying on her back? to experience. Experience what? Isao doesn't really enjoy her smart ass comments. I have to agree with Isao, but it isn't really her fault. I'm sure whenever she says these smart ass comments, she doesn't know how annoyed it would make the recipient feel. Isao tries laying on his back too. He just lets it all in and experience. Experience the clouds move past him, the sound of the cicadas and traffic. Isao talks about yesterday and that he had fun. He never sat in one place for that long. Emmy appears with bread. Emmy notices he doesn't see Isao on the track anymore. He's considering other options besides running and Emmy doesn't dig into it. Yeah, in every route, Isao just foregoes his well-being to be with anime girls. After English class, he did say he joined art class, so there he goes. A girl invites him in and he notices Rin staring outside. Nomiya comes in, starting club activities. He instructs the eight people in class to choose a partner and sketch each other. Hisao just joins so he doesn't have any friends. Oh well, there is Rin at least. Hisao asks to be her partner, to which she stares at him for a while and says, yeah, okay. They're doing ink sketches. So Hisao models first and Rin sketches him. Hisao feels like this is the first time Rin is looking at him directly and not just in his general direction. Hisao comments just like with the mural, Rin becomes so engrossed with her work she shut everyone and the world out from her own little sphere of existence. Anyways, we see Hisao's amateur work. Rin compliments him, he just needs practice. Then Hisao peeks at her sketch and it's pretty good. Then we get a choice, I wish I was as good as you, or you're amazing. Yeah, they're essentially the same thing. That's the gimmick with Rin's route, at a glance the choices are so obtuse it's hard to tell if it will make a difference. Looking at Rin's route in a big picture way it kinda makes sense, but for now though I chose I wish I was as good as you. It looks quite grim, and Rin says yeah it suits us out, which made him feel self-conscious. It's great to see the developers actually had characters draw sketches in the narrative, then really draw them and show them. They look pretty nice. 
They give the paper in and they leave, but Hisao didn't see Rin in the hallway. He goes straight to his dorm and meets Kenji. He lets out the fact he was at the art club and yeah, that's total indoctrination, brainwashing hive mind stuff. He takes a detour in the bathroom and we get a surprisingly introspective scene where Hisao questions his self-image in the mirror. That grim sketch of him Rin drew must have hit him deep in some way. And though I can hide my cold gaze, and you can shake my hand and feel flesh gripping yours, and maybe you can even sense our lifestyles are probably comparable. I simply am not there. It's morning, and Asao wakes up feeling like a brick. In this scene, what's worthy to mention is that the soundtrack playing right now is Stride, which might just be my favorite track in all of Katoa Shoujo. It is usually clear what emotion a piece of music is meant to give when listening to it. But for Stride, it plays during many moments without a clear connection. It feels lighthearted but tense as well and is used in both lighthearted and tense scenes. The best way I would describe it is this track is meant to portray going through life with slight struggles and that's kinda how I feel 90% of the time. Like I'm not always in a happy or depressed mood, I just feel like I'm going through the motions of life with a slight sense of being weighed down by whatever is going through my life at the moment. Usually it's college work or just something else I feel like I need to get done. Anyway, sorry for the out of nowhere music rambling, it's just my favorite track and my favorite visual novel so I wanted to gush about it. So yeah, Hisao woke up, he's showering while thinking about what could replace his morning running routine, maybe a nice walk to a convenience store or through the nearby forest. Walking to the classroom, Misha greets him with a 1000 watt bulb smile which he fails to respond to as enthusiastically. They bring up the student council position again but he informs them he's in the art club. The second he says, art club, Shizune looks frustrated at him, but the teacher comes in just in time. Hisao questions himself, why did he join the art club? He's not really passionate for it and he doesn't have the skills. Well, he does have a pencil and paper in front of him, might as well start. And he gives up after putting in one dot. He glances outside to see a bird and then gets inspired. He slowly draws more strokes, closer to what he had in his head. He's making some assumptions too, since he doesn't really remember what birds look like in such detail. This scene is truly a beautiful experience into the art process, how art sometimes cannot come out of nowhere and needs inspiration from, say, nature. On top of that, it shows the slow process of manifesting the ideas in your head into reality, how much it fits that vision and what parts need assumptions. Anywho, Hisao gets interrupted by Misha and Shizune who says his art needs a little bit more practice. Besides that, they were here to scold him for not listening to the teacher during class. After class, Rin and Hisao meet. It seems she keeps bumping into him recently. Hisao comments on the fact, just like Rin, everyone in Yamaku Academy is actually quite sociable. Quiet recluses like Hanako are the exceptions. I suppose with everyone being disabled, the minority becomes the majority and is a nicely knit community. Rin asks to listen to Hisao's heartbeat, another disability to add to her grown collection. Hisao asks for a reason why she collects disabilities and she's bad with reasons. Oh hey, she ate an orange for breakfast today. If you ask why the topic changed so suddenly, it's Rin, just get used to it. She always wanted to perfect how to peel an orange because, you know, she doesn't have arms, but luckily Emmy was there to peel it for her. I just want to say, it must be unhygienic to eat with your feet. I hope she sterilizes them first with like feet sanitizer or something. Otherwise, you gross. Hisao gets lost in thought. Why was Rin's sketch of him when they were in the art club so grim and gloomy? It's because she's never seen him smile once. Hisao gets self-conscious about this, but Rin says he can't help but be Hisao, so he doesn't need to smile more. Speaking of smiling, here's the girl who couldn't stop doing that. Emmy asks Rin out to lunch, but before they go, she stays behind to confront Hisao about why she hasn't seen him at track this entire week. He hasn't been able to pick himself up, so she suggests to go to the track meet this weekend. He doesn't have a reason to decline. Hisao is in front of the mirror again. He smiles. He can't help but notice how fake the smile looks. A subtle lesson that you should just accept and be yourself, which might or might not be attributed to Rin later on. He finds himself in the library wanting to read a new book. A short haired girl waves at him and when he waves back her group of friends giggle in unison. That girl, his how knew, had epilepsy and seeing one of her episodes yesterday was one of the scariest things he saw happen to a human body. But today she's with her friends and waving to strangers. That makes his how notice something. In Yamaku the students 
students are more proactive and sociable compared to his previous schools. He mentions this to Yuko. A choice pops up. Is it refreshing or does it make him feel stuck? While the reasoning behind the choices is still mysterious, we can at least infer it's trying to gauge the reader's outlook on his house new environment being Yamaku Academy. I feel like it could go either way. If I was self-conscious, I would compare myself to others and feel left behind, but if I wasn't, I'd probably enjoy the new attitude everyone has. Anyways, I chose it was refreshing. Yuko says, well, that does sound like a good thing. That's how I apologize if he was rambling. Rin must have rubbed off on him in some way. Yuko doesn't mind. It makes her feel reliable. If he ever needs to talk, just come to her. I think just now I realized what her role truly was. It's therapy, basically. Fast forward to the day of the track meet. Rin is surprised his how actually came. His how said, of course he came. He said he would. Rin retorts people say things sometimes, but don't actually mean them. They both question why they're even at the track meet. Rin leads us out to the top of the bleachers and finds an older woman to greet them in a teasing kind of way. Rin was meant to bring back snacks, not a boy. She introduces herself as Meiko Ibrazaki. She's sure Hisao met his daughter, Emi Ibrazaki. She asks how long have Rin and Hisao been dating, which puts them on the spot. She laughs at their embarrassed, shocked faces and apologizes them for teasing them again. Oh hey, the race is starting. Everyone is on the starting line. The second the starter fires his pistol, Emmy explodes off the block as the other racers catch up with her. Hey look, it's Miki. Mako starts cheering for her daughter. She is quite proud of her, but this is not Emmy's route. Hisao notices Rin's foot was bouncing on the bleachers. She's not interested in running, but she is here for Emmy. She says it's rare to see Emmy at her emmy -est. Trying to understand what she meant, he stares at Emmy running and notices the determination in her eyes. She truly is amazing. Mako adds that her father got her into running, but says with a wistful tone. She gets a phone call from her quote-unquote friend suddenly and has to leave. Hisao analyzes back on his Rin's remark. Emmy is at her emmiest while she runs, and Hisao does think that's true. But what about Rin? Does she feel the same way about Heart? Was she at her most Rin when she was painting her mural? This actually gets explained in Emmy's route. Hisao was wondering why Rin and Emmy were friends. They don't seem like they fit each other at all. But it's not that one of them runs and one of them paints. They are friends because of the reason why they do it. That let them do their hobbies easily and they respect each other's determination. Rin asks if he did see Emmy at her emmiest and maybe now during the next race he will see it. Indeed he does. She runs with an unexpected amount of grace, unbefitting with how she usually acts. They go down to crown the victor and Rin tells him to find a laurel branch, which he doesn't take seriously and Rin brings it up to Emmy that Hisao did not find one. So Hisao could make it up to her by joining a post-track meet celebration next Sunday and she is inviting him. Of course, Hisao agrees to go. Emmy leaves for the medal ceremony. This makes me think. In Emmy's route, Hisao notices Emmy had an infection and insists she go to the nurse. Here, he doesn't notice it. It is kind of morbid to think that if you just don't choose someone else's route, their problems aren't fixed and you're sacrificing them to be on another route. But it is what it is, I guess. Speaking of that, it is masterful writing that this event, Emmy's track meet, is in both routes, but what Rin says about Emmy was interpreted by Hisao and different ways. In Emmy's route, they both directly appreciate Emmy, but in Rin's route, his out takes what Rin said about Emmy and applies it to her. The fact that the dialogue is the same but serves two purposes is mwah genius. I love tight writing and versatility, you guys. I'm taking notes. Way back to the dorms, Rin says, isn't it great Emmy was able to truly be herself? But that's strange coming from Rin. Doesn't she have her paintings to express herself? But she responds by saying she's not really sure of who she is. Quite a loaded line Rin just dropped. In the art club, he thinks back on what he was talking about to Yuko the other day about how everyone in Yamaku is more active than others. He continues saying the students here aren't like other schools and Rin is not getting what he means by that. Nomi arrives, not having planned this art club's meeting in mind, asks for qu suggestions from the crowd, but they're awkwardly silent. Hisao interjects, asking why does art exist in the first place? This excites Nomiya, hearing the new boy's enthusiasm with that big question. He asks others for related questions like what defines an artist, and what can be qualified as art. He doesn't have any concrete answers, and neither 
do they exist, so he'll explain his viewpoint. Art defines itself. Its definition changes from the forces expanding and contracting within. If science is technical and rational, art is instinctual and primal. An artist doesn't draw because he can, but because he must. Art touches the very soul of each and every human being. He recites a poem, to see the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and, and eternity in an hour. Those were some heavy answers to a heavy question. I do love philosophical discussions like these, so I'll indulge a bit. I've always thought the purpose of art was to express oneself, and I could answer all the other questions like what defines art through that lens, but it's just kind of limiting myself. Maybe it really is much more open-ended, and even trying to define it in the first place was mistaken. I enjoy the poem as well. It's basically saying artists shape and form their surroundings into another perspective, and how they have the power to do so. Seeing the world in a grain of sand, artists can see something as big as the world into something the size of a grain of sand through art, and holding infinity in the palm of your hand means they have a limitless potential when it comes to choosing a subject for their art, and how they only need their hand to do said art. I'll have a very, very long video ahead of me if I keep doing these philosophical discussions, so we are moving on. Sal turns to Rin asking, how is this a discussion circle if he keeps lecturing? And yeah, the other times it was like this too. Nomi approaches Rin after the discussion circle and has some amazing news. His colleague and gallerist, Miss Sionji, after looking at her mural, was interested in seeing more of her art and maybe even putting it on display. While it does sound like a great opportunity, Rin is very hesitant and confused. It's the first time Sao ever saw her like this. She says she'll think about it. She wants to go somewhere and lets Hisao join her. She wanders into a forest. Hisao, tired, asks her where they're going and she answers, the worry tree. It's where people go when they're feeling miserable and by people she means her. Hisao can barely tell if she is miserable based on her expression. After some thought, she shrugs her shoulders. A common reaction of her is that Hisao is starting to dislike. It doesn't mean anything. She feels like she's drowning and doesn't know what to do. She's always painted for herself and acknowledges Mr. Nomi has done a lot for her, but she just is not confident in herself. Hisao sympathizes. Before going to Yamaku, he was just helplessly going with the flow, then forced to come here because of his condition. It feels exactly like being underwater. Rin frowns. Is she becoming like him? She doesn't want to look sad all the time. Isao doesn't really think about what face to make at any time, and Rin does the same thing. Tangent mode. Weirdly enough, back in elementary school, I had watery eyes pretty consistently. I don't know why. It might have just been some biological function, and people said to me I looked like I was crying and asked if I was okay. This happened quite often, and I never really knew why until I thought back on it. Even to this day, people say my demeanor and attitude, posture, and voice that I act depressed all the time. Huh. I wonder why. Anyways, they change the topic into why rubber ducks are creepy looking. They lie down next to the worry tree and Hisao ponders what he could do for Rin. Hisao realizes he's in a similar position to her after moving into Yamaku. This is the transition period in his life where he should change himself for the better and that takes action. He cannot stay the same. So, a choice. I want to be more like Rin or Emmy. I would think, oh, it's obviously Rin to get a good ending, but Rin doesn't even want to be Rin right now, it seems. We need a headstrong, no-nonsense girl who wouldn't hesitate like Rin and just go for it, like Emmy. So I chose her. His house says, yeah, Emmy's got it. She's energetic and happy. It's getting late though, and then they walk back. Rin seems like she's made her decision. Hisao realizes while walking back, she's alone with a girl in a secluded place. At first, she's annoyed with him with her unpredictable behavior, but grew to like that part of her. He wants to talk to her more, even though she's practically the only one he talks to besides Mishiro Kenji. Makes him slightly depressed. We find Kenji in front of the dorms and he meets Rin. He awkwardly presents his hand for a handshake as Rin just stares at him. Reminder that Rin doesn't have arms or hands. He's unfazed and tells his how he's waiting for a package at night so the student council won't question him. He goes back to Rin to educate him about man-eating cows or something and hands her a pamphlet with his secret password. So takes the pamphlet since Rin obviously couldn't and Kenji walks away. Rin just asks, what's wrong with him? And Hisao just answers, he's legally blind. I've realized that Kenji's conversations are less discussions and more like performances, as if he's behind a glass wall in a museum. Here we go, here's the letter. This event happens every route. He's wondering why a fancy handwritten letter in the modern age would be for him until he sees the sender. Iwanako. The last time they saw each other was in the hospital and they were silent most of the time. They weren't on great terms. To summarize the letter, she catches up on what's going on in her school, saying she regrets she didn't get 
closer during his hospital stay and gives him the choice to respond back to her or not. This letter just made him empty and confused. He didn't want to be reminded of this or the fact that they could still be in touch after their painful interactions. He does write a short reply but doesn't expect a response back. Sure enough, she doesn't respond. Now, not thinking about Iwanaka anymore, he tries to change himself and observe other people. He realizes the soft and numb sadness permeating through everyone and the effort needed to get through the day weighing everyone down like it does for him. He can't tell if they're happy, unhappy, or gotten used to it and cope. He represses this thought while thinking of Rin, who is spending more and more time at the art club than her own dorm. He doesn't understand her. She seems indifferent yet so passionate at the same time. Asao and Rin are in the art club as he just watches her do her work. He's literally watching paint dry, but somehow isn't bored. While Rin has some drive to paint, his house directionless and tried many techniques and activities, but none felt right to him. Mr. Nomia leaves for a meeting, and Isao wonders if Rin can actually hold a conversation with him. Nomia is giving her a serious opportunity, but Rin is so relaxed that it's hard to know what she's even thinking about. Isao is unmeaning to ask, why does she act so weird when it comes to Mr. Nomia's proposition to display art at the gallery? She does not want to talk about it, or talk in general. She doesn't want to talk because it's difficult to say the right things. She says things she doesn't mean, forget words, and use the wrong words, and sometimes she doesn't even understand what she's trying to say. I agree 100% words suck. Language was always an approximation. Back in the Stone Age, when we haven't invented language yet, thoughts were vague and abstract. In a way, we could have only acted out our thoughts through action and movement. Nowadays, everyone can speak, read, and write, and now there is an expectation for us all to be fluent in language, but our thoughts have been just as vague and abstract as they've always been. Some fit into society and are lexically aligned. Some, like Rin, aren't and try to communicate in other ways. Again, the issue is this expectation for us all to be fluent in language when there should not be. I am passionate about this because I've had many discussions and I keep getting told that I suck at talking and I'm like, yeah, that should be okay though. What do you expect a totally tism infested brain like mine to do, huh? Just change my brain chemistry? Okay, I went on a history lecture there, but I'm, I'm just as wacky and random as Rin. Okay, we're moving on. Rin wasn't done talking though. She feels there is something with herself that makes her act the way she is, but she just cannot identify what. To me, this is the most tragic thing about Rin. For the other heroines, even though they have serious problems, we at least have reasoning why they have those problems. Like, we know why Emmy does not like getting into deep relationships. We know why Hanako is so shy and anxious. But for Rin, she doesn't understand why she is the way she is. She used to be able to remember seven things at once and now it's just four. The more she paints, the more she forgets. It's as if, if she keeps on painting, she'll forget how to speak normally and completely detach herself from the world. She takes a deep breath and stands up. She enjoys painting. Paintings get left behind and still exist after they are painted. It's like a physical memory and she can recall her thoughts or feelings when she made them. Isao says, who boy is she a complicated person. But Rin says one last thing just before Nomia comes back to the classroom. Change is the scariest thing thing to her. She doesn't know if she wants to change or if she can even change for Nomia's sake. She says this with a hint of desperation in her voice. Isao couldn't reply as Nomia appears. Yes, what are they talking about? And he just says, about his proposition for Rin. Well, sort of. So what does he think about it? There's three choices. Tell her it'd be exciting, it'll waste her talents otherwise, or she should aim high. I don't think she would find it exciting or fun. I don't think she's doing art to use her talents, nor do I think she has any high expectations for herself. I was thinking I might convince her it'd be exciting, but personally I hate being wasteful of time and money, talent included, even though Rin wouldn't feel the same way. This is a hard decision, so I'm just gonna wing it. His house says she'll waste her talents otherwise and pushes her to be more decisive, but Mr. Nomia stops him. She needs time, although he does want an answer before next week. I didn't mention this, but Nomia often calls her good girl after every conversation. I just wanted to mention that. Ew, he sticks his tongue out? 
in the sprite? Why is he doing that? He admires Rin's painting and it truly is captivating. About artists in general, especially great ones, ideas just come naturally to them. But even if you have that potential, it wouldn't matter unless you realize it. Not to toot my own horn, but I do have these ideas all of the time that I want to work on immediately, but I never do because depending on the idea, it'll take a few days or months of work. Most of them are video related, so I need to do research, write, record, and edit each idea to realize it. I do have writer's block sometimes, but it doesn't matter because when I do have writer's block, I have a gigantic backlog of ideas I've collected that I could just act on. But besides that, Rin isn't great because of her ideas, she's great because she works so hard. And yeah, learning to paint with your feet is impressive. It's how asks about Mr. Nomi's career, and he doesn't paint anymore, instead he became a teacher for arts after his career ended. Anywho, that's how it leaves for the day. That weekend, they did promise to celebrate track meet last week with Emmy, but the weather is overcast. Emmy did ask others to join, but only Asao and Ren came because of the gloomy weather. Emmy was waiting all week for this, fasting on sweets just so she could splurge on sweets today. Asao did bring an umbrella just in case. There's a cute little story about it, how it was his grandparents' umbrella and it was so big it was able to cover both him, his grandpa, and his grandma. Sadly, they passed away, but he still uses the umbrella. I never needed to know about that little backstory, but that attention the detail to his past is something I can't not mention. On the way there, they don't make much conversation. Hisao hasn't spoke to Rin since the art club. Despite Emmy's confidence it wouldn't rain, it rains. Hisao covered everyone into his umbrella, but what are they going to do about the picnic? Emmy suggests the Shanghai and they all go there. It's quite busy since it's raining and Hisao notices the singular waitress going from table to table. He recognizes her. It's Yuko. She's making ends meet getting into uni by working as a waitress. Anywho, what do they want to order? Emmy is undecided and orders two pies. Hisao orders one and Rin orders nothing. Thing. Emmy thought it was rude and Rin isn't going to eat so she orders a straw for her wet feet. I don't know what she's gonna do with that, but okay. Yuko comes back with her order, and Emmy takes a forkful of his house cake, even though she has her own slice of the same flavored cake. He lets her do what she wants because it is her celebration. It is still raining. Oh well. Emmy wants to go back uphill for some exercise and to work off that cake, so Rin is left alone with Asao. They walk back without saying much to each other at first. Asao looks away from Rin and admires the scenery. I know in visual novels and in Katwa Shoujo's other routes, Asao is descriptive of the environment to paint a picture of it to the viewer, but in Rin's route, I feel is even more descriptive and talking like an artist with explicit art references like talking about colors of the sky, the sun, the clouds, and styles like pointillist when the rain hits the ground. I think it really has changed because of Rin in subtle ways. Rin comments on the rain too. Everything feels subdued and the outlines are blurry. She likes the rain because of that. Hisawa agrees. I agree, but I like rain because when I'm inside it feels like your house is a giant blanket and you can see outside the window. It's windy and cold, but comparatively you're inside being nice and warm. Hisawa Sao ponders more about Rin. Does she want to connect with people? If so, why not show her art in the gallery? That's like comparing apples and squids. She says she doesn't know who she is, but weirdly she has a strong personality. But Asao doesn't know how to define her personality. It's like Rin is asking it herself every day, who am I, and obsessively paints day after day to define herself. In front of the dormitories, Rin stops and stares back at Asao with her cold, blank eyes for a moment. She wanted to say something but couldn't say it. She just says, see you later, and then leaves. The next day, Sao actually visits the nurse. He's been dealing with a couple of students without an umbrella yesterday getting the sniffle, so it's been a bit busy for him. He does his checkup, and after that, the nurse said Emmy got sick, which did not surprise him. He leaves for the roof, not expecting Emmy to give him lunch anymore, though. He soaks up the warmth of the sun, making him drowsy and lazy. It's finally lunch, and Rin appears in front of his Hao. This mirrors their first lunch interaction, where now Rin asks what he is doing while he's lying down. He is just spacing out. Sao tells him the bad news that Emmy won't give them lunch, though, since she is sick. She might have caught it, too, since she sneezes as well. Later on, they find themselves just passing the time, not even talking to each other. Rin doesn't talk because, as she said, talking is hard. Hisao doesn't know what to even talk about with Rin. He notices she stares at the sky often and asks what she likes about the sky. She says it's always different. Does she want to become different? Not be in Yamaku Academy and live like a normal life? It's a hard question. She tried to change, but it's scary. She doesn't know in what direction to change either. If I'm different every day, but I'm still me every day, then who am I then? Is Rin the human of Theseus? That was an awful joke. So what is Rin? Hisao answers. 
the sky because they were both different every day. Rin gets caught off guard and agrees, but then Hisao reminds her it is impossible for her to literally be the sky. Hisao thinks of the sky, the last time he thought about it in depth was in the hospital. For me it was Subahivi because of course it was. Rin has this attitude, but she is also malleable and can change into whatever she wants through just state of mind. She isn't happy with who she is, but she doesn't regret being her either. She pushes himself onto a sow. It's meant to be a hug, but Rin doesn't have arms, so it's kind of hard to tell. She can feel his heartbeat, and she comments it's like a drunk percussion orchestra. His sow gets uncomfortable, but then apologizes for being a mess, and Rin responds that's the best part of him. An awkward silence befalls them. His sow says, well, that was a good lunch, but Rin knows a better place they could go to next time. Rin leaves after the bell rings, and his sow follows suit. It was kind of mysterious why Rin hugged his how back then, but maybe she just wanted to comfort him in that way. She could even have some intimate side we haven't seen yet. Two days later, he's feeling less miserable and runs into Emmy, who acts like she wasn't sick a few days ago. She wants to check up on Rin, and Hisao wants to follow, but it's the girl's dorm. He does work up the courage to go to the girl's dorm after two days, and when we arrive, he sees Rin with barely any clothes on and a rare smile on her face. He says hi, then becomes silent for a while, then explains he just came to talk to her and wish her well, so Rin lets him in. She says it's the first time she's had visitors, well, except Emmy, but she doesn't count. She pampers her too much, and now she can't put the bra on herself, which is probably why she wasn't wearing one now. Isao notices she isn't self-conscious of her body, but he is very conscious of hers right now. Welp, Emmy gave her a bottle of meds, and she's just been munching on them since there's so many of them. I uh, searched up the side effects of codeine, which is what she was consuming. It includes feeling sleepy, confusion, and dizziness, so that sounds about right. Also, it's like the main ingredient in lean, apparently, I think. She claims she's fine, but can't think straight. She's thinking about a certain insect. There's either a lot of them, or it's just one big insect with wings and super colorful. Oh, she's thinking of butterflies. They're her favorite. Did his house see them on the way here? This is the purest a lateral spiral could be. If she had no restrictions on jumping from strains of thoughts, this would be it. His house looks around and notices her abstract paintings. Her room even smells like the art club room a bit. Her room isn't very organized except for the orderly piles of stuff she has lying around. He says, nice place, which is an admittedly empty sense, and Rin's like, eh, yeah. He just wants to say he doesn't want to feel pathetic anymore so he just won't and will probably feel better from now on. Rin is happy for him, or at least thinks she is. He always looked sad, but not because he happened to look sad, but because he generally was sad. Her thoughts aren't very straight and wish they had some shape or definition. It's a mess. She says this while plopping down onto her messy bed. She's tired, so that's it for the day. She'll at least walk him to the door, since that's the least a gentleman could do. Rin has always wanted to say that, apparently. Rin stands up with some difficulty and then takes a few unsteady steps toward him. To his surprise, her downward momentum or shorter stature hasn't stopped Rin from pressing her lips onto his. After that bewildering moment, she wonders if she'll remember this tomorrow. She flops back into bed as Hisao tucks her in. He realizes he's been holding his breath for the better part of a minute after that kiss, he takes a deep breath, and moves on. You know, with how clumsy Rin was at the time, it's hard to even tell if the kiss was on purpose. Hisao was thinking of the same thing tomorrow in class. He can tell he's gaining feelings for her, but he doesn't know if Rin thinks about him at all. He runs into her outside of class and doesn't know what to say in this situation. Does she remember what happened yesterday? She makes this face and doesn't remember a thing. Hisao is disheartened, but she does remember wanting to show him a special place which she will, right now. And Sao doesn't have anything better to do, so they go. They walk past the park, into the forest, and out into a grassy open field. I notice Rin enjoys spending time being absorbed in nature. I wonder if it's to get away from people or if she enjoys admiring nature. For me, it's definitely the latter. They arrive at a large meadow with wild grass and plants swaying in the wind and many yellow flowers spotting the ground. Rin enjoys being here. Hasao touches one of the yellow flowers and realizes it's a dandelion. Hasao asks if something is on Rin's mind and she drops this with this bombshell. I'll summarize this text. It's her worrying about if something did happen yesterday and the trouble of translating her thoughts into speech. Hisao couldn't handle this and puts his hands on her shoulders to stop her. She puts on a timid expression and says, it's weird, isn't it? You'll forgive yesterday as well, but again, she doesn't remember what happened. Well, she kissed him on the lips. Brynn's like, eh, that's fine. At least she didn't kick him. But she does feel she needs to apologize. She's bad with people, and there are things that are hard to understand. Like jellyfish. People are like jellyfish to her. She's never really had friends, so you get the choice to mention Emmy or yourself. I didn't want to make it about myself, and she's been with Emmy longer than me, so yeah, I chose Emmy. 
Yeah, she takes care of her, but she doesn't know why. She doesn't feel like they are on the same wavelength either. She's always been friends with pencils and brushes, but rarely people, and they need words to talk to, and she hates words. That afternoon, still on the hill after vibing for a couple hours, Rin asks, he's going to become better, right? She is going to do the same thing and accept the gallerist's opportunity. She's going to move there and work hard to get it done. She knew she was going to change a long time ago. It's inevitable, so why fight it? She loves doing art, so it's great she's allowed to do more of it, just somewhere else. I can relate to Rin's lack of willingness to change. It is very hard to realize when you are needed to change and then actually enacting it. Isao was finally able to breathe deeply, peek his head out of the underwater feeling that plagued him since coming here and let it all out. He sees Rin's peaceful but determined face when opening his eyes. He feels like Rin is closer to him within arms, or to be respectful, legs reach. As I was sleeping in class, as Muto lectures about the philosophy of education because he needed to be reminded of such. Misha and Shizune barely contain their giggling. During art club, they focus on capturing nature as Rin looks even more detached from before. She'll talk to the gallerist. Mr. Nomiya is ecstatic. He immediately calls Mrs. Sayonji for a meeting and prepares Rin's portfolio to show her. They need to meet face to face and drive there straight away. They go to the 22nd corner, which is the name of the gallery. Rin can't stop herself and asks, why the 22nd? Where do you stop or start counting corners? No one responds to her. They enter and we get introduced to Sae Sionji, who is the gallerist. She carefully eyes her art, sharply and analytical-like. For Mr. Nomi and Isao, it's tense as she might deny her, but of course Rin, being completely detached from the situation, asks again if this is truly the 22nd corner. Isao is a bit annoyed at her since this is meant to be a serious moment for her especially. Luckily, Miss Sionji likes her art. It's playful and vibrant, although it lacks direction. It lacks cohesion between works as well, which is not proper for an exhibition, but Rin is willing to paint more for this opportunity. Sionji eyes her again and then her art and asks to speak in private with Mr. Nomia. During their conversation, Isao notices their serious expressions. Sionji comes back and says, what she has right now is not enough, quality-wise, so she needs to work hard to put her stuff on exhibition. Sao mentions she's already spending every waking moment not in class painting, how can she work even harder? Mr. Nomi suggests he can arrange for Rin to temporarily skip classes. Miss Sayonji even helps out by letting Rin use the atelier upstairs, although it's been unused for years and they need to clean it out first. Rin stays silent throughout this interaction, but both Mr. Nomi and Miss Sayonji are excited for this. This made me think about the artist's struggle. If there is a spectrum between artist and businessman, Rin is pure artist, but every artist needs some marketing skills and connections to actually get their work out there and to finance themselves. I'm saying it kind of sucks that human beings actually need to be practical to make a living instead of the ideal world of doing what you love and people will let you be. Anyway, point is, I just want to do whatever I want and get paid, damn it, like what everyone desires. Okay, next scene. Rin applies and for the rest of the term doesn't have to join any class. Classes. Today is the last day for her classes, so Hisao wants to meet her before she leaves. He goes to her class and finds her taking a nap in the beautiful lighting of the afternoon sun. Hisao decides to wait and admires the sunsetting landscape, but something appears on Rin's face. A singular tear. Then, more come out. Hisao doesn't know what to do and just wonders what she's dreaming about. She does wake up, and the tears are nothing to worry about. She trained herself to do that, actually. Hisao just wanted to wish her luck. She needs it the upcoming months, and she thanks him. She needs to leave soon, though, for the gallery. He offers to visit sometime if he is the distraction, and he can visit, but just don't bring Emmy. She is too much of a distraction. Rin states she is going to change. Isao responds that's what people must do sometimes, and that's the last thing they say to each other. It pains him to know he can't meet Rin at any time he wants anymore. He's getting restless in class. He runs to Emmy outside, and they're both happy for Rin. Emmy bets she'll sell tons of paintings and make piles of money. Though she is sad too. She told her to stay away because she might get distracted. She's worried too, since she sometimes gets so fixated on what she's doing she'll forget to eat and sleep. Rin said before she doesn't really see Emmy as a friend. Emmy thinks maybe it's because she's more more like her big sister who pampers her. Even after all this time being friends, she still can't understand her. Hisao empathizes, that's just the way she is. Well, she has a track meeting, so she runs off. 
Hisao mentions that even Rin's closest friend isn't any closer to understanding her than anyone else. She can't help but imagine how lonely Rin must be, stuck in her own world. Hisao has his own club to attend, being art. Nomiya comes around checking on everyone's work and goes to Hisao's pencil work. Nomiya also glances at Rin's seat and reminisces on her. She's truly blossoming as an artist and will go places in the future with her talent. Hisao mentions her disability. Wouldn't we be exploiting her like this? While well, disabilities have always been a touchy subject in society, we would exploit her if we focus on her disability and discriminate her if we try to hide it. But we're just being honest at the end of the day. He is sure Saya can handle it. He's known her since art school. She's passionate in giving up and coming young artists a chance. Though, does Ren even want to be a career artist? Nomi has no idea either, but he'll give her the opportunity nonetheless. Hisao has this deep-seated anxiety towards Rin that she's moving in farther away from him, and he doesn't want to be left behind. He wants to stay friends and be part of her life, but what does he mean to her? A choice appears, but I was resolute in this one. I want to support her. Understanding her might be impossible, but I can at least help her as a friend. He puts his graphite down and really thinks about what he wants for Rin as art club ends. Next scene, Hisao is on the bus, reading his book. He arrives at the 22nd corner and he meets Miss Sayonji who directs him to this atelier. He's here to see Rin. He climbs a dark stairwell that reminds him of the stairs in the school building. Maybe because it is the exact same stairwell. Reaching the atelier, it is a spacious room with the natural light coming from the roof. It is still quite messy. Rin is faced away from Hisao in front of a half-painted canvas, not working on it, just staring at it. Hisao tries to start some conversation. How's the painting going? She pauses before responding. It's like a big ball. She doesn't know which is the right side. It's huge too, as if she swallowed a mountain. Point is, this is going to be very hard for her. So why is he here? His out replies, she said it'd be fine if he visited her and maybe wanted some company, but Rin told him to shut and be quiet for the next like 15 minutes. Interestingly, Rin's tone of voice doesn't change. It isn't angry and frustrated, it's just Rin's usual apathetic tone. Hisao, with nothing else to do, stares and studies Rin's back. Her unkept hair, her messy apron, seeing her work, pisses him off. He looks at her back literally and figuratively as Rin is off in her own world. What does Rin think of him? He doesn't have the faintest idea, and that makes him frustrated because he might never know, even though he has feelings for her. She will never take it seriously or understand how to respond. Nothing affects Rin. At this point, I was like, man, I can't wait to read Lily's route or something because at least that will be much more straightforward. Rin's problem is so fundamental to her personality, it's hard to think of a solution and neither do I think she can easily change. Hisao finally has her attention. He wants to talk about last week. She has no idea what he is talking about. Hisao feels annoyed again. She really has no idea. They kissed, but she forgot. Can't blame her, honestly. Hisao also said he'd forgive her, but okay. Hisao is obsessed with Rin, like a puzzle in the form of a girl he has to solve. He comes out and says it. He likes her, more than a friend. She asks, what is more? Like, romantically is what he means, but she stops his how in his tracks before continuing. She can't talk about things like that right now. Just be a friend. He can do that at least, right? Hisao can tell he isn't needed here anymore and walks out, but Rin asks if he could come in again tomorrow. He answers, yeah. Hisao goes through the day mechanically, doing everyday actions without thought. By the time he visits the atelier again, he's exhausted. Rin doesn't seem like he, she even acknowledges his arrival and stays silent. Hisao describes his silence as the first true awkward silence between them. Yesterday, he said something he couldn't take back and is waiting her response. About his confession, I feel like I disconnect with Hisao here. Especially his feelings toward Rin. Rin is a fun person to talk to, but never what I think is a good fit for a romantic relationship. It seems like she loves art and has no room for anything else, but I guess you can't help it when it comes to love. Thinking about it a bit more though, Hisao can still make himself useful to Rin, since she doesn't log her hours, document her work, is bad at talking to people and doesn't care much about her hygiene and other things, he can be helpful to her in a myriad of ways. In fact, I find myself in that position where I try to find someone else who can take care of me and I just follow them, because I really don't enjoy thinking about technical survival things, you know. But I guess that's what's so frustrating is just how Rin will not reward him for doing any of that. Hisao feels like he's suddenly lost the ability to converse with her. He'll just sit down here and let her do her work. After half an hour, Rin breaks the silence. Is Hisao her friend? Of course he is. Don't worry about that stuff. 
Much later, he comments on her painting. It looks great. But she instantly replies it's bad luck to comment on unfinished paintings. Isao doesn't say anything back and leaves immediately. The first time she said that it's bad luck to comment on unfinished paintings, Hisao indulged into what she said even if he didn't care about it. Now, after their relationship progressed, Hisao is not having any of it. He montages about his current phase of life, which is traveling over to Rin's atelier, watching her paint while reading a book for a few hours without conversation, and then leave. If Hisao is not doing anything, then why did Rin want him to visit her? As always, she doesn't make any sense. Paint cans, sketches, brushes crowd the atelier. Hisao offered to clean, but she refuses. What looks like a mess is her personal system of keeping track of everything. Saya comes every so often and is amazed at her work and diligence as well, but whenever she takes her eyes off her work and looks at the little redhead girl that made them, she has a sudden, deep expression of sadness. Hisao doesn't know why. While the exams are coming soon, all he can think of is Rin. He tries to help her in other ways. She hasn't been eating properly, so he goes to the convenience store. At the atelier, Rin comes over to look at what he bought. But her expression doesn't change. He brought fruit and offers to peel the oranges for her. She asks how the work is going. It's like trying to climb out of a mountain made of jelly. She's used to painting, but she never felt this pressure before. As he's cutting the oranges, he realizes he doesn't even know if she likes oranges. She doesn't know much on anything she likes or dislikes. Compared to other people, Hisao still doesn't know much about Rin, even though they spent so much time together. Hisao feeds her the orange as Rin ominously says, painting isn't what it used to be for her. She might start painting differently. If she's talking about painting less for passion and more for work, then I can relate. Hisao says, well, isn't that the change she was talking about? Rin is kind of shocked at this revelation and thinks on it. She didn't think it would be like this. We'll just keep doing it and see what happens. Right now, she can't do much else. She repeats, it's the only thing she can do. This line has a double meaning to me. Rin admits all she is good for is painting and is aware of it, but also shows how she feels trapped into the situation because of that. Because that's her only skill. She eats some more oranges, then stands up to continue her work. The next day, Saya and Rin are in front of the 22nd corner. Saya asks for her progress. It's difficult, like she's missing something, but she will finish it. Saya is doing her part too, with decorations, sales, catalogs, invitations, advertisements, and so on. So, everything else. She asks for the names of her works and a general theme. I feel like Saya is tethering Rin down to reality, bringing her artistic potential into something tangible in multiple ways, such as doing the marketing side for her and trying to define her work in some way for others to understand. But of course, Rin doesn't like that her works need names. She's bad with words, so she'll avoid them when she can. She says names are misleading too. She'll paint a cloud and call it an octopus, or paint a cloud and call it the end of the world and would have different meanings and misunderstandings based on the name. Saya actually takes her idea seriously and lets the paintings be without labels. It would work with people too because it has a theme of rejecting labels and connects all the paintings together if none had names. I'm happy to see Saya be so open-minded. I expected her to force her to give some theme, but you can tell she's experienced with other artists too. Rin doesn't think it's a bad idea. Just before Saya walks back in, Rin interrupts her and asks for a cigarette. Saya gives her one but warns her not to tell her teacher. It feels corrupt that even Saya, who knows Rin is missing something, might get some inspiration from trying cigarettes and actually lets her do it. Rin has been trying the past few days to get out of her rut, but nothing works. She hasn't painted for the last three days. She thinks she might have to destroy herself. She's tried changing, but after all this time, it's not enough. So, having a smoke it is. What's after smoking, she doesn't know yet. It feels tragic for her to stoop so low and experiment with drugs to fix her problem. His house is right. What is she going to do after smoking? It's not rational at all, but Rin feels like she has to do it. Anyways, to uh, stop talking about that, look at this cursed sprite. Seeing this bright, cartoony style, something as real as a cigarette is so funny to me. She lies down to take the filter out of her mouth and Hisao lies down next to her. We dive straight into her lateral spiral of thoughts. What's that word for when smoke looks like that specific shape? There isn't. Maybe they should make a word for that. Smoking feels like inhaling dust on top of a forgotten book about a dead kingdom. He lets Rin smoke the rest. He questions to himself. Are the cogs of creativity turning within Rin right now? Sao stares into the night sky. It feels like a metaphor for the distance between them. Light years of physical distance might still be too short to describe the distance between Rin and the rest of the world. He wonders, will they ever be closer than they are tonight? They're on their third cigarette. And on their fifth, Sao gets a bit dizzy. He blurts out, it'd be nice to be able to fly. Rin responds after a long silence. Yeah, she feels like she can fly sometimes. Like she can do anything. Hisao says, 
Yeah, me too, but couldn't fully agree on the inside. He cannot reach Rin, or in other words, be with her romantically. This entire scene is quite magical and one of the most memorable scenes in Rin's route. It's just you and her lying down and getting hella high. Anywho, after a while, he has to leave for school. He stands up, but Rin stays lying down, as if all life has been sapped from her. Maybe she's just burned out. If she is, then is this it for her? Is this as far as she can go? It's not just a simple artist's block. She's had it before, but they were short. This is different, as if she's forgotten how to paint. His out comes up with an idea after staring at the window. Let's go outside. He explains when some get troubled, they escape into a world of fantasy, but Rin is the opposite. She needs to get out of her inner world and go outside. Yeah, escapism is still my go-to, so he's right. Rin doesn't look happy about this, but reluctantly follows him. His owl grabs Rin by her sleeves, and they walk with no direction. Rin stays silent, letting his owl lead her. He recalls a moment in his childhood where he was left alone by his parents for a weekend, so at night he would wander around the city. The maze-like structure of the streets made him think differently, and he hopes the same would do for Rin. They stop to buy snacks and coffee from a vending machine. Rin speaks up. Is this it? Sao says the city at night is like a completely different world. It's not a different world though, it's the same, but it's asleep. But what would the city be dreaming of? Seems like Rin has regained some of her old self. But she stops the rhetorical questions and looks into the night sky. He asks the rhetorical question back. You ever feel like you're trying to reach for something that's impossible to reach? She answers painting is a lot like that. Trying to convey your message or meaning through painting. Sometimes it's easy, but other times you just can't reach the message in your head. It's like talking, as Sao says. But even painting might be going away for her too. Change really is a scary thing. As Sao wishes he could understand her, and Rin says, Me too. She also says to not worry about it. As Sao is at least happy the friction between them has lessened after this. She even seems happier when walking back with a spring in her step and leading the way back. But when they reach the 22nd corner, Rin tells him not to visit her for a while. She does not want to be distracted by him while painting. His eye is caught completely off guard. He doesn't like this. He doesn't want the distance between them to be even farther. So Rin lets his eye touch her. That'll make him happy, right? The fact that Rin is sacrificing her own body just so Hisao would leave her alone would show how committed she is to painting. Hisao hesitates but complies. No boobs or left ear though. What's even the point? I wanted her left ear, damn it. Hisao touches her cheeks. Her face cheeks. She closed her eyes and smiles back. That's the problem with their relationship. He never understands what Rin is thinking or her feelings to him or just what is even happening at any moment. Rin says, see you later, and disappears into the building. As I holds true to Rin's promise and focuses on his studies, he feels confident he'll get into a decent university since he's good at studying. He wonders if Rin has thought about her future as well. It bothers him he can't stop thinking about her, and he cracks. He goes to visit Rin. He wonders if she'll get angry. He's never seen her display much emotion before, like their relationship would be ruined, but he can't know for sure with Rin. Sai interrupts his train of thought, and even though he wanted to visit Rin, she brings him inside. Mr. Nomia is here too, discussing Rin's exhibition. They look at her invitations with fancy gold writing and frame. Her painting is there too, and it looks very grim. That is not a good sign. Isao is much more mindful of Rin than either Saya nor Nomia. She's been having a hard time painting and practically lives up there now. Saya brushing his concerns inside, saying she's back in the groove and she, that she's taking this opportunity seriously. Is it even that big of an opportunity? Nomia answers to quell Hisao's worries. There comes a time when you'll get invested into something and changes you forever. The journey to committing to art is a big decision and a thorny path as well. He says this since something similar happened to him in the past. A choice pops up. Why are they so supportive of Rin? Or why turn away from being an artist? I'm curious as to why he stopped being an artist and losing all much of the passion that comes with it, but I'm more interested in the here and now with Rin, so the former it is. Isao doesn't understand why they are being so supportive of Rin. Why give her the atelier all for herself that hasn't been used for who knows how long? Saya answers, it's been 17 years and 4 months. The atelier belonged to her husband, who was an artist. Saya was mesmerized by him and his talent. His genius at painting and the arts consumed him and nothing else mattered. How did Saya cope with it? however she could. She pursued her own career and left him by himself to paint sometimes. After all, you can't stop an artist from creating art. 
being with a true artist was fascinating too. They're generally lovely people. Artistic expression is about finding oneself within limits and working within those limits, but Sai's husband didn't follow his own limits and lost himself in his art. A human being can't endure a thing like that. He died young and Sai tried to forget about the atelier he worked at. It isn't clear how he died, but the point is he let his art consume him and other things weren't important. Like his well-being or maintaining social relationships. He might have relied on substances like smoking and alcohol to fuel his art, which in turn destroyed his body. Asao asks, what if Rin is like that too? She doubts it, but her hands are shaking and she puts on a sad expression, the expression she makes when looking at Rin. She goes outside and wants Nomiya to join her for a drink. She's trying to forget what happened to her husband. They both leave as Asao goes for what he originally came here for, Rin. Upon entering, Rin is on the floor masturbating with her foot. She moves in rhythmical motions back and forth, breathing heavily as her hips were swinging circularly over and over again. Rin heard Hisao come in and he finally sees Rin's dismal expression. She told him to stay away, her words defeated as if in suffering. Sorry to interrupt, but I did not get the subtlety of this scene when I first read it as like a middle schooler. I thought she was just sitting down, feeling sorry for herself, not that she was literally feeling herself. This brings a whole new twisted sense to the scene. The fact she'd do this to herself for art, and I guess just how weird it is to see a disabled person pull this off. Many mixed emotions here. Asao apologizes for coming here, but Rin says it's not that. She rambles about change and how it feels like how she cannot take it and why she has to destroy herself. Asao looks at her sorry state, lacking any modesty a person usually would have or body warmth. Neither she cares about in this moment. She stays in the atelier day after day in her own room, disconnected from the rest of the world, destroying herself for her art. This act is done for something that even Rin might not understand herself. He should leave, but Rin says it doesn't matter. He almost walks out, right there, but no. He comes closer, crouches down, and hugs Rin. He can't leave her like this. She doesn't react. His body warmth is shared with Rin. He thinks back on why he even came here. Rin has dug into his house heart and become a part of it without Rin even particularly trying. He asks Rin if she's alright. She isn't. She painted great things before, but it broke her. Then asks for a favor. She is not finished yet. Esau understands what she wants and agrees. She wants to be comforted and he wants to comfort her. He caresses Rin's bare stomach with his hands. And that's a hate scene. What an incredibly awkward moment to have one. Sex is meant to be an expression of pure love between two characters, at least it usually is, but here it has emotions of healing from this destruction that Rin was talking about, as well as the conflict of this just not being the right time or place for sex. Am I meant to be turned on or empathize with Rin? sorrow here. I don't know. The scene is such a masterfully done concoction of emotions. Neither really know what they are doing and neither gain pure joy from this activity, but at least feel slightly better about the whole situation. So what'll happen after this? Rin asks. Nothing, I guess. Rin feels tired. She feels like she's lost something besides her marital purity. Hisao responds. Don't say things like that. He feels like he'll lose Rin, but she isn't going anywhere. He's afraid that she is, all the time. Rin rests her head on his house lap as he stares into the sky. Feeling groggy and stiff after waking up, he notices Rin dressed herself up, standing in the middle of the atelier. He approaches her and apologizes for yesterday. He preferred things went to go more properly. Rin has a confused expression, not understanding what he meant. To be fair, last night when they had sex, a lot of emotions were at play. It felt like Asao took advantage of her as such a disabled sad state and Rin just let it happen. Asao wishes they did it at a better time and place. But Rin sees it as a boolean function. Does Hisao want this kind of relationship with her, aka sex or not? She assumed it was a yes because he liked her, but Hisao says it's more complicated than that. She told him to forget about it and she will too, but Hisao just can't forget about it. He likes her. She said not to talk about that, but Hisao says she brought it up. Hisao hates this part about her. She can't express what she feels, like she expects others to read her mind. This is a tense scene, but before I do anything else, I do remember as a child, I just did not communicate how I was feeling or what I wanted because I felt like it was obvious. As an adult, I finally understand how different people could be, so I started expressing my opinion more even if I felt it was obvious. In general, understanding yourself and explaining yourself is one big step to becoming more mature. Rin understands deeply that others are different, but is just unable 
able to explain herself because again, words are hard for her. Hisao asks, does Rin hate him? She doesn't hate anyone, so then what is he to Rin? Hisao is trying to rationally and reasonably communicate to her, but she never understood what being rational is. Rin says she can't. Why? He won't understand. She might not even understand herself. And here's the biggest choice in the route. It doesn't matter. I need to understand or then explain. Whenever I read these choices, I don't get how it'd make a difference or read the subtleties, but after reading into it after all these years, I get it. So what differentiates these choices is how frustrated Hisao is with Rin, with how standoffish she is and how much he doesn't understand her. She acting standoffish or eccentric and refusing to explain herself because she simply cannot. I've explained this before, but Hisao has this expectation that people should be able to explain themselves through language, but human minds don't have an obligation to do that. Some brains just aren't wired that way, and Rin is one of these exceptions. Hisao needs to accept this fact, because if he couldn't, then he is just plain incompatible with Rin. So the it doesn't matter option is the best because Isao doesn't care if he understands Rin or not, and that's the best way it could happen. He'd support her even if he doesn't understand her. The I need to understand is the middle option. It doesn't factor in Rin's inability to explain herself, and Hisao is just being selfish, but the then explain is the worst option as Hisao forces Rin to explain when again she can't. So for now I am choosing the last option. It's the same stupid pattern. He asks a question, he, she replies, but doesn't answer anything. It's the only way they can converse. Is this some kind of play? Is Rin doing this to torture him some way? She nonchalantly shrugs to her nonchalant answer, which pisses Hisao off even more. He doesn't even know how to respond. Hisao misunderstands that she is turning him down, but she doesn't want to do that. So why play with him like this then? Hug, ignore kiss, forget. Rin says it isn't like that. She needs to paint. Hisao shouts back. He's not something to be used just so she could paint. She can't do much else but paint, she replies, and yeah, he figured that out already. Art first, everything second. Can she think about something that isn't herself for one moment? Rin finally notices his house anger and she says she doesn't mean, but she interrupts herself. She doesn't understand, she doesn't explain. That is Rin. How can Hisao understand her if she doesn't say anything? He forces her to talk, but she doesn't. He monologues to how frustrating it is to be around Rin. She ignores everything everyone says and stays in her own little world. Rin is shivering, holding back tears. She bluntly says for Hisao to go away. She cannot deal with this. Hisao does leave and thinks back upon what happened to her. She changed. Or did Hisao change? Was it because of the exhibition? Did she ever have any feelings toward him? He'll never know because Rin will never answer. Hisao plops himself back to bed. He can't convince himself everything will go alright. That's just not how it is. He sees his watch and drinks his medicine. Things that he can depend on for the rest of his life. He thinks back on the time he wasted on chasing things out of his reach. That time he will never get back. So that was the bad ending. Hisao doesn't understand Rin. Rin who refuses to explain herself. Why bother with a person like that? Hisao kind of thinks of Rin as dumb or incapable here, which she is in a sense, but he just needs to accept this part of Rin to be happy with her, because Rin has accepted it herself and she can't change this fundamental part of herself. So back to the penultimate choice, I say it doesn't matter. She wants to paint, do the exhibition to the point of destroying herself? Yeah, whatever. She can do whatever she wants, but he will have no part in it. Isao still feels she needs to do this, even if it's unhealthy in many ways. Rin simply says, that's fine. Isao leaves even more empty than before. Hisao finds himself in a somewhat pleasant afternoon class. He wonders if he was the only one who got hurt in yesterday's conversation. In art club, he doesn't feel motivated to go since Rin isn't there, but it's the last meeting for the exam, so why not? He wanted to talk to Mr. Nomi anyways, so he does and tells him of his concern over Rin, how obsessed she's been about the exhibition lately, and how she acts stranger than usual. But Nomi isn't convinced, saying she's just working hard as she should be. Hisao doesn't push on the issue, and they agree to meet during her exhibition. During the exams, Hisao curses himself for missing out on all the opportunities and things he should have said. It eats away at him, the fact he can't stop thinking about Rin. All of a sudden, Rin appears in front of his room. She said she finished painting. Hisao is not happy to see her. It's closer to anger. So why is she here? 
she just felt like it. Hisao really will never get any answer out of her. He goes into his room and Rin comes in uninvited without saying anything. Hisao just lets her. They sit in silence for a bit and Hisao knows she'll never start the conversation. She must have something to say if she is still in his room, right? Without words, Rin approaches Hisao until they are almost touching and she tippy toes to reach his face. Hisao puts his hand between him and Rin to stop them from kissing. Rin says, Please, I need you, with a coarse tone. Hisao can tell something is wrong, terribly wrong. Does Rin really think he would be glad after shutting him out for a while and then coming back? Hisao feels used by her to hug and kiss whenever she wants and then ignore and then kiss again. She isn't doing it on purpose. Hisao is mad at her for never explaining herself to which she just can't. He forces her to talk but she just stays quiet. Eventually Rin wants him to go away but awkwardly they are in Hisao's room so she just leaves. The dialogue here was the exact same as the bad ending dialogue by the way, I just paraphrased it twice. The difference is Hisao had a moment of clarity and didn't mean the things he said, but Rin left anyways. He starts questioning himself. Was he the reason why Rin was acting so strange all along? He was one of the reasons she went along with the exhibition after all. He banged his head, blaming himself for all of this. After venting to Rin yesterday, he let out all his bottled up feelings and now is relatively calm while visiting her exhibition. He feels guilty for what he did and is sure Rin is confused on how to take all this. Isao gets into some philosophical discussion on how Rin always feels like she has a completely subjective view on things, unable to see things from other points of view and how objectivity doesn't really exist. In that case, that makes Rin a lot like the rest of us. So Hisao walks into the exhibit and it's quite crowded. Saya is in the middle of the lively discussion of her student's art. Hisao being in such a loud, busy place discomforts him. He wonders how Rin is handling all of this. He goes deeper into the gallery and sees some paintings Rin did that he recognized from her portfolio or in the art club. Finally looking at some of her paintings, they are very grim and macabre and show some creepy anatomy. I guess it would make sense since she would have to contort her body because of her lack of arms to do normal daily things and it would subconsciously affect her. Another thing, maybe making art in the atelier was just really stressful and scary and she put those emotions in the paintings. Anyways, back to Hisao, he doesn't want to be here or know what he's doing, but he did promise a few people to be here so he stays. He approaches Saya but instead finds a short little gremlin girl, aka Emmy. She's here because Rin went to the track meet so she should go to her gallery, but she doesn't understand art whatsoever. She asks this to Hisao who replies, yeah, me neither. Emmy is driven to find Rin and drags us out along with her, and they do find Rin eventually. Emmy and Mr. Nomia meet who was next to her. Emmy is sarcastic for her super cool art thing, and Hisao congratulates her too, but she doesn't respond. Again, they had an argument yesterday, so it's kinda awkward. Though Emmy doesn't notice the tension between them and keeps blabbing on about this and that. We transition to some bystanders that ask Rin a cavalcade of questions which overwhelms and unnerves her. She couldn't hope to answer the piles of questions thrown at her, even if it was just one at a time she would still have trouble answering them. Everyone expectantly waits for her to speak but she does not know what to say. She becomes limp and falls to the ground as the crowd around her just stare at her, not knowing what to do. What's wrong? She doesn't know what is wrong with her. Hisao butts in and grabs her by the shoulder. She needs some fresh air. They talk. She couldn't say anything back there. She felt like she could have said something, that all this would have meant something if she did talk but she just feels strained. Hisao still urges her to go back since Saya arranged her exhibition and those guests would ask her more about the painting she worked hard for, but she hates questions like those. She never knows what to say. She just wished someone wouldn't have to ask questions from her, and then a choice. If you found someone like that, and then what? Or, aren't you happy people are interested in your paintings? So this is another confusing choice that separates you from the good and neutral end. I'll try to explain the choice here, and I believe this scenario that I'm about to show you will explain the choice best. So imagine this, you are an artist. What are your motivations for becoming an artist? This choice splits it into two. The latter is the simplest to explain. It is the fame and recognition of having your art out there. Shouldn't she be happy other people are interested in her paintings? Or the former more difficult to explain but intimate motivation to create art to find people that connect with you. People that understand your art and don't ask questions. I feel I've been on that journey for quite a while and it might be why I've started my YouTube channel in the first place to express myself to the internet because people in my life did not have remotely similar interests to me. So the latter option focuses too much on other people. You don't become an artist for other people. You do it because you need to express yourself.
yourself. Anyways, you are choosing the latter option at first for the neutral ending. Essentially, Hisao says, I don't get it. You should be happy. All these people came to your exhibit and are interested in your work, but she isn't happy. She doesn't want to answer any more of their questions or explain to Hisao what's wrong. She's distressed and doesn't know what to say. Words left unspoken. Words she cannot say. Hey, I got a great literary quote from my favorite guy, Wittgenstein. What can be said at all can be said clearly, and what we cannot talk about they must pass over in silence. He's referring to things beyond human comprehension that naturally cannot be talked about, so I guess what I'm implying here is that Rin can reach those thoughts that are incomprehensible to her and in turn to other people, which is an interesting way to think about it. Anyways, that was a bad time to put in a tangent. Continuing on. They walk back in after that and Nomia tries to comfort her. It's how it thinks of this whole situation. Rain is the embodiment of coming over her disability and making it big with her first exhibition, while Hisao is just her follower not achieving anything yet. He doesn't feel like a part of anything going on right now. Hisao is thinking about vacation. Not much to do at school. Time to head back to his parents' house. He looks at his doodles. He just wanted to kill time with no direction. Mr. Muto asks for the class to turn in their papers and it's Misha. We haven't seen her in a while. She asks what he is going to do for vacation and she said she'll go to Hishizunui's mansion and it'll be the best vacation ever. You know what? It was pretty fun fishing and going to the park and everything. Shame about her dad. So yeah, summer vacation and nothing to do. He tries reading, but he just cannot concentrate. He's too restless. He goes outside to take a leisurely walk, but the library is closed and neither Rin or Emmy are in their dorm, so back to his room it is. He should really talk things out with Rin. She felt like a girl bordering on insanity, constantly challenging the bounds that restrict the human mind. For the rest of the day, Rin, the hospital, and vacation swirl through his head, with most likely no recollection of those thoughts for tomorrow. Maybe he'll go downtown or somewhere. somewhere when to window shop and buy something even though he doesn't need anything. <sighs> he sighs. Back in the hospital, he was content with doing nothing every day, but now he just can't sit still. Did he change or his world change? He concludes he needs to see Rin tomorrow. It's a rainy morning. The downcast weather makes him feel down too. He walks outside anyways, interrupted by odd clunking sounds on the other side of Kenji's door, but he's unfazed and continues forward. Going to Rin's dorm, Emmy walks out of it. That's not surprising. She dresses her up in the morning and makes her lunch. But Rin isn't here. She left for the gallery a few hours ago, but she wants to know. Why does Hisao care about Rin? But it seems irrational how far Hisao went for Rin, sacrificing much of his free time to be with her. Isao notes how nosy Emmy can be, and she would be a good partner for Misha. Uh, Emisha? Give me that fanfic. Okay, thanks. Emmy leaves to catch her bus as Isao heads to the gallery in the pouring rain. Isao turns to the 22nd corner and finds Nomiya and Sai in an empty gallery. Even though it's raining, Nomi is in a good mood. Yesterday's uh, exhibition was a success. Nomi is excited to do more with his prize student, but has to leave for his meeting. Isao glances again at her paintings. I like this color palette, but it's still really creepy. With the skulls and the screaming, like, what was going on in Rin's head? Isao asks a question. How do you interpret the art? There's no complexity to it. An interpretation's importance is the same, whether it's anyone's on the street or the intentions of the artist. It's just that the pros know art theory and use it to gain meaning from patterns and such, but that doesn't mean much. Feelings affect art the most, how we create and see it. She delves into a story about an artist and their friend who committed suicide. This affected the artist who only created monochromatic paintings for the next four years. Seeing the artist's work during this period might change the viewers of the painting if they didn't know about his friend. This artist was Picasso. It sparked his quote-unquote blue period. Basically, art is personal and any detail in their environment can affect their work and is interpreted in equally many ways. It's our thought again about how art is communication, but as Saya said, there are so many tiny factors involved and everyone's speaking their own secret language. I bother trying to communicate. He concludes art is just isn't for him. He walks a bit deeper into the gallery, trying to see art the way Rin does, but it's futile. Rin enters the gallery saying she's ready, but when she sees Hisao, she goes back outside. Hisao runs after her with an umbrella, quickly exhausted because of his heart. He feels a bit uncomfortable too, being next to Rin, but he came here to talk to her. Why does she run away? It hurts to be near Hisao every time they talk. So, they don't talk. They just walk together. Rin is relaxed, but Hisao realizes he's become restless as of late, after meeting Rin. He opens the conversation. He wanted to see Rin before leaving for home. Good, she would have thought he'd been kidnapped. 
She can't just run away from him like this and this serious talk, but she feels she's always serious. But what if she ran from the exhibition yesterday? Rin doesn't respond, escaping into her silence. Just like that night, they don't know where they're going, choosing random directions. Isao asks another question to break the silence. Why'd she do the exhibition in the first place? But again, no response. It's pointless. He felt that night during the exhibition there was something special she wanted, something unattainable. She ignores everything else in the world to obtain what she wants, and that frustrates Isao. He shouldn't have visited Rin today. It only reminds him of the reasons that make Rin so infuriating to be around. Eventually, the rain gives away and Rin stops walking. Isao turns around. She just wanted someone to say, I understand how you feel. Isao asks, why is it so important? She says she doesn't know if she can bear this. When someone laughs or cries, you want to laugh and cry along with them, right? But she doesn't know why she has the emotions she does, why she can't find the right words, why everything stays inside her but she feels like she will burst. She doesn't want to feel like that. Isao doesn't fully understand or to empathize with everything she said, but he words it in this way. Everyone wants to be understood, but that is impossible. Everyone can only see things the way they do. Everyone is alone and uses other people to alleviate that loneliness. Rin feels betrayed. She thought Tisao was the one, the one who could understand her, so why go and say something like that if it's a matter of fact? Because he would be lying otherwise. To see the world in her eyes and understand her is to become her, an artist like her. Rin doesn't feel like a real artist either. She did it to feel something, so she is decided. Sai and her talked to an important person about a scholarship in Tokyo, and she is taking it. Sai was surprised she dropped something so life-changing. Doesn't she want to graduate with everyone else? Everyone who? Emmy and him and everyone? Well, that has nothing to do with Rin. That's their lives. She wants to seize her opportunities just like Hisao said a long time ago. Hisao knows she's just twisting her words to justify running away again. Why doesn't she at least try to belong? Rin asks, does Hisao hate her? He doesn't have a counter. Even if he did, does it matter? He promised to be his friend and they could try to... But Rin stops him from continuing. She leans forward to put her body in Hisao's arms. She's on her tippy toes to snuggle closer and speaks into his ear. Does he really not hate her? It's hard to answer when she's hugging like that. She moves away. She can't hug anyone normally, so she'll find her own way to hug people. She'll become a true artist too, but in the process, she might not be herself anymore. That's why she says to forget about her, and she'll try to forget about him. How could she say such a thing? Because she was always good at it. Isao feels this is deeply unfair and that she can't be serious, but it's Rin. He knows she's always serious. Is this it? Is this goodbye? Rin had nothing to say to him. She walks away without looking back. The world around him was changing little by little as he stood still. Her words stayed frozen inside his heart. And that is the end of the neutral route, which is similar to the bad end, but Hisao has a bit more empathy. Sadly, it's not enough. The last time they talked felt like it was the first time Rin was being genuine and being self-aware of herself. The frustrating feeling of not having anyone being able to understand her and keeping everything inside when you're going to burst. That's what it feels like being Rin having so many thoughts and ideas, but you just don't have the words to communicate them properly. Hence, saying so many things, but meaning nothing. It also introduces the idea that no one will ever be able to understand anyone else, which is depressing, but it's also true. No one will experience the exact same things you have, so naturally no one will have the exact same understanding you do in the world. Saying something is wrong with Rin is saying something is wrong with the world. Rin didn't choose to be Rin. There might never be words that can define Rin, but that is not a fault of Rin. That is the fault of language and the world. I wanted to answer why Rin acts the way she does, but I feel like even Rin doesn't understand why, so we can only accept Rin for what she is. Don't expect her to communicate like anyone else can. Just let her be and you'll see the good parts of her really shine. So remember that choice? Shouldn't she be happy with other people looking at her paintings? In this ending, she is pursuing her career for that reason. Hisao kind of convinced Rin to push her true self deep down and keep painting to be a successful artist, but at the cost of being free and being herself. She pushes herself to leave Hisao behind. In this world, as an artist, you have two choices. Monetize your art and become successful in material wealth, but that means you need to make Make significant changes to your art to appeal to the public, or be true to yourself, express your true ideas so with no guarantee of success. In this route, Rin chose the former. As Rin said, she might lose herself in the process. So what if she chose the latter? During her exhibition while Rin and Hisao took a quick break outside, what if Rin created 
needed art to express herself and find someone who can understand her. If Rin did find someone else like her, she wouldn't have to feel so alone. She regrets doing the exhibition, at least this early in her life. She doesn't blame anyone but herself. She walks back to school. She just wants to be herself. It's how it stops her in her tracks. Even she never finds someone like that. She doesn't have to be alone. She walks away without reacting. Asao walks back into the gallery and Nomiya questions where Rin is. She ran away. He is furious that she'd just do that in the most important event in her career. Saya calms her down. The guests are happy and she'll explain that Rin suddenly became ill. Emmy is also furious. She's gonna go and kick her ass. But Hizau advises against it and just to leave her alone for the night. He goes back to the dorms. Hizau's already finished his test, so he's just doodling without direction. It's vacation time, but he can't go home just yet. It would be weird without talking to Rin first. Suddenly, Mr. Nomia barges in and asks to borrow Hizau. He immediately asks where is Rin. He doesn't know. Maybe let her be for now. She's figuring herself out, and she did have second thoughts about the exhibition. But Nomia didn't sense that at all. He assumes his goals are the same as Rin's goals, to be a successful artist, but Hisao disagrees. Maybe painting doesn't make her happy. Nomia makes the stance clear. Happiness is not important. Painting is work, and work needs effort. That doesn't feel like how Rin thinks. She feels obsessed with painting, but she isn't goal-driven. Nomia asks a simple question. Does Hisao have something like what art is to Rin? No. Then he can't possibly understand. But it's possible she doesn't even understand it herself. Of course she would. She's been painting her whole life and Nomiya leaves it at that. He goes back to showing off how everyone was interested in Rin's work and they even sold one of her paintings. Things Rin doesn't care about, but Nomiya does. He just says, well, tell him if he finds Rin, and then he leaves. Isao simply walks to the nearby unused classroom and immediately finds Rin. Cool. The teacher is looking for her. Is Isao looking for her too? Well, he already did find her, but did he really find her? <laughs> I swear, sometimes Rin is just gaslighting on purpose. Isao doesn't really know what to say, so... They stay in silence for a bit. Hisao just asks what's wrong and she says nothing. He'll leave if she keeps avoiding him and she asks, is he still angry at her? Well, he doesn't want to be. He explains she just left yesterday and Mr. Nomi wants an explanation. Hisao wants to know why, too. Did she make a mistake, though, to leave? That response was so out of left field it stunned him. Even if it wasn't, it was still pretty stupid. She just couldn't do it. She can't explain why, either. Not in a way that makes sense. That's the way it is. Huh. Hisao still wants to make sense of her, but she cannot make sense of herself. They just keep hurting each other this way, so why do they keep close to each other when this cycle of not understanding each other will never stop? Why are we here just to suffer? Hisao asks, why does she paint? Because she needs to. Because she feels there is no choice, it's the only possibility. Hisao says this makes less sense. She says painting to her is like having to eat a watermelon popsicle because that was the only flavor and you had to eat something. Rin felt satisfied with this metaphor, but Hisao still doesn't understand. At first this made him feel frustrated, now it makes him feel exhausted. It feels like a dead end with no direction to go. She left the exhibition yesterday because she wanted to be herself? How can she feel she's not herself yet? So he asks more generally, why do artists need to paint? Rin wants to see inside of herself so it doesn't make her feel lonely, so she expects others to look at their paintings and see her soul? It's kind of like that, but not really. How does he not understand this? Hisao is rarely on the same page as Rin. It's as if she is somewhere completely different, though she is right there. There's an imaginary wall between them that prevents comprehension from happening. This could be true for any conversation, but for Rin, it is much more tangible. Hey, that isn't an imaginary wall. It's called an AT field. Rin likes running away. Hmm, what other character likes doing that, huh? She literally even touched herself that one time. They're totally the same character. Okay, enough Evangelion. I just can't stop thinking about that show some days. Hisao continues. He isn't able to understand her any more from her art. To him, art is meant to be interpreted, not understood. Rin comments. That's a sad thought. Well, they spend enough time in this classroom. Hisao urges Rin to apologize to Mr. Nomia, who is worried about her, and she nods. Once Rin enters his office, aka the art club room, Hisao eavesdrops. Mr. Nomia asked what she was thinking about that night when she left the exhibition, but Rin mumbles to herself. There was no one. Not not even Hisao, in parentheses, who understood her. Was she thinking about Saya, who put so much work into her exhibition, or the many, many guests? This would tarnish her reputation before she even had a career going, but she doesn't need it, she says. This enrages Nomia. 
She thinks about being an artist is so wonderful and easy, but she would not have gone that far without him. When she's lying in her minuscule room, rent late for three weeks, haven't painted anything in four weeks, she would have listened to old Mr. Nomia more. Her resolve isn't enough. Rin responds, she isn't a resolved person. So why did they have to go through the exhibition if it all amounted to a mosquito's shit? Hisao feels bad for her. She shouted at her as well, making him feel embarrassed. Mr. Nomi continues, he shouldn't have gone so emotional. But why do all this work if it amounted to nothing? He shouldn't have given this opportunity to her. She isn't a true artist after all. He leaves without noticing Hisao. He walks into the room. We see Rin alone. She couldn't say sorry. Hisao defends Rin. Nomia should not have went that far, but Rin wants him to go away. He's angry too, right? He was angry, but not anymore. He wanted Rin to be something more than just a friend to him, just like Nomia who wanted more out of Rin, but Rin is just Rin. She doesn't have an obligation to fill anyone's expectations. Hisao apologizes. He was thinking as friends they could have a deep relationship, but being a good friend only means a Supporting one another. It doesn't mean anything else like becoming boyfriends and girlfriends. He thinks he'll never be a good friend to her. Rin asks, why? Why does this happen? Other people expect things out of her that she doesn't ask for and everyone keeps getting angry at her. She just wants to run away. She has no idea what is wrong with her. Her eyes filled with dark green desperation, hoping for any answer, but his owl doesn't have one. Although, as she says, there is no right and wrong. Just accept things the way they are, work to change them, or give up. No one hates Rin. It's just just he'll give up when he can't go on, and if she hates that, that's just the way things are. Hisao's harsh words hit Rin hard. She leans on Hisao's shirt while crying. This might truly be the one time Hisao understood Rin. She's a human being, just as confused and scared as any of us, but no words can describe how they feel at this moment, nor any words to make it feel better. Rin begs Hisao for her to stay like this, just a bit longer, and he couldn't deny her. A painful thought goes through Hisao's mind. How can he comfort Rin? What will their future be? What do they mean to each other? All of these questions and Hisao does not want to think about any of them as he fears knowing the answer will be too painful. He might at least know why does he spend time with her? When did he fall in love? Her carefree spirit that saw the world in only her eyes captivated him. It was something he could never do, but once he approached Rin, she was too alien. Her mind was too far away from everyone else at any point in time. Rin finally breaks off from Masao and asks, what were they doing? She was crying, but why? Because she was sad? She couldn't really describe how she felt. She felt painting was enough, enough for others to understand her better, but this exhibition made her realize paintings won't. Whatever she does might never be enough to express herself. She'll just always be alone. Was it wrong to try painting? She looks expectantly at Hisao, who doesn't have any answers. Maybe she was trying to reach for Hisao like he was trying to reach for Rin. Hisao tries to put it into his own words. When he finishes a good book or movie, it feels profound, feelings he can't put into words. When he starts putting them into words, the words he used never quite fit the thoughts in his head. It feels phony. It's possible no one can ever truly use words to convey the thoughts in their head, but we just can't keep those thoughts to ourselves. That's why he thinks it's okay for Rin to express herself through painting. It's because we all see things differently, subjectively, that we can't or shouldn't expect others to understand anyone else. Rin says, isn't that a terrible thing? And yeah, it is, in a way. It can't be helped, but the fact he made it clear makes her feel a little bit better. As Sao finally got through to her, she's finally grasping straws that she just now realized existed, but Hisao realizes he should just accept the parts of her that he doesn't understand. She wants to go to sleep. Since the past few weeks, she hasn't been able to properly. So Hisao walks her back to her dorms. Out of the blue, she says she has to change. That's what people must do sometimes. The day after, it's raining cats and dogs. Rin appears outside his room, soaking wet. She was taking a walk, imagining she had a blue umbrella with white stripes. Yep, she's back to her usual self. Anywho, she needs help drying and taking off her wet clothes. Before Hisao could ask, Emmy already left, and even if she was here, she's way too fussy. So yeah, Hisao gets a towel but hesitates. She's about to touch Rin in a lot of places. Hisao sees through him immediately. It's fine. If it wasn't clear enough that taking off Rin's clothes means a hate scene, then I'm telling you now, there is a hate scene. 
I guess it's cool to get one hate scene that's plot relevant and emotionally turmoil than another hate scene where it's more for enjoyment since it's how I accepts her the way she is now. Hold that thought actually, they're as close as they've ever been, but he doesn't feel happy per se. It's tenderness, but also longing of some kind. He stops thinking about his emotions and just dries Rin so she won't get a cold. He takes off her pants and okay now it's a hate scene. They talk after the activity they just did. This is not really what friends do. Rin says he doesn't want to be friends anymore. At this point, they finally understand each other. They want to become closer. Isao questions himself, can they do that? While Rin is a creature of impulse and freedom, he is nothing of the sort. But for this moment at least, he will seize it. Rin says, is this what not being alone means? Isao says, yeah. He's there for her whenever she gets soaked by the rain. She answers with a kiss. Then they continue on what they were doing and Hisao's mind whites out. The present is a vague concept. Is it the infinitesimally small amount between the past and the future? It's best not to think about those things and just live in the present. Hasao wakes up as Rin is passed out on the table. She wakes up and states she wants to go somewhere. It's time. Rin impatiently goes out of his dorm and heads to her special place. On the way, since it stopped raining, there should be a rainbow, but he can't find one. Weird, reaching for a rainbow is impossible, but reaching for Rin seems closer than ever before. When they reach the field, dozens of small white tufts float through the air. The sea of dandelions are spreading their seeds. A common phenomenon, but it fascinates Rin for some reason. Rin out of nowhere asks, does Hisao love her? He doesn't know. She's unsatisfied with his wishy-washy answer, but she's also unsure. She doesn't know much about love, but then says, I love you, to Hisao, which stuns him for a bit. Then goes back to the dandelions, saying, they taste weird. She can't explain what she's feeling right now. She's trying to find the words, but then just stares at his Hisao after failing. Tears come out of Rin's eyes, both Rin and Hisao being shocked at the incomprehensibility of this emotion and this situation. She might be afraid of Hisao, that's just what she felt like saying at that time. With Hisao, she feels like running away, but her legs are stuck. When he is being nice, she just doesn't know what to do. She wants to do something, but she doesn't know if the current her can. Hisao says she's being stupid. He gets closer and kisses her. Hisao still doesn't know the future. Rin's spirit and passion, where will it lead them? While he is uncertain, he feels like he can live with it. Rin says she feels she's scared by his kindness. Is that a bad thing? Well, if it's just how Hisao is, she can live with it which makes us out happy. He grabs a dandelion and blows the seeds away. A few weeks ago, they were just little yellow flowers. Now, they're traveling far away. This is change. The flowers changed, but did Rin change and become an artist yet? She shrugs her shoulders. An action that frustrated Hisao before, now he can appreciate. How she can shed the weight of the world off her shoulders, if she wills so. She is truly and utterly free. Rin climbs onto a rock to watch the clouds. Her voice lacks resolve in tone but full of meaning. It's all right to be me. Before she accepts others, she accepts herself. On that rock, it feels like she can find what she is looking for. She spreads her arms as wide as she can, as if they were wings. He is sure Rin can find herself in this world instead of creating and escaping into her own little world. At that moment, it felt like the world can fit between her small arms, her all-encompassing embrace. She asks a question to Hisao. What's the word for when it feels inside your heart that everything in the world is all right? It's beautiful. Katwa Shoujo truly is art. That is the end of Rin's route. And oh man, Rin, where to begin with her? When she was young, she never had many friends. She was different, somehow. She didn't know how to explain it. Only brushes and pencils understood her. She had millions of thoughts and ideas in her head she just had to let out into the world. But she was awful with language and communication. No word exists could fit what was in her head. So art was the next best thing. She didn't paint because she liked painting necessarily. She did it out of need. She must paint. Otherwise, she would feel lonely and no one would understand her. In high school, she meets a close friend, Hisao, and she was given the opportunity to show her paintings in a gallery. She was scared of this, of changing. Was she enough? She's never had to paint besides for expressing herself. 
now she has to paint for other people and for her career. She reluctantly agreed, but it gradually destroyed her. Before ideas came naturally and there wasn't any pressure, but now she relied on sex and drugs to fuel her art. And even then she wouldn't know if they would help. She just needed to change. In the middle of all this, her and Isao start falling out as well, with Isao feeling he is being used and played around by her. But she did not mean to do any of those things. She was just being herself. After a while, she was able to pull through for the exhibition. During it though, she was overwhelmed by the amount of questions being asked by the guests about her art. She doesn't know how to answer any of them, and then breaks down. She thinks to herself, is this what she really wants? She doesn't want anyone to ask anything of her, just let the art speak for herself. She doesn't care about art being a career either, she just wanted to do art to express herself. She realizes this exhibition was too soon for her, and then runs away. Mr. Nomi was rightfully angry with her, same with Hisao. She just doesn't understand, where do people get these expectations out of her and why is everyone angry at her? She doesn't know what is wrong with her, Hisao comforts her. He says this harsh truth that our thoughts and ideas might never truly be expressed 100% accurately because of the limitations of language, the millions of little understandings and interpretations possible and just how different people could be. Hearing this relieves her that she might not be alone, and at least everyone suffers from the same problems she does. She lived in a world that didn't accept her, so she accepts herself first, hoping everyone would do the same, because there really is nothing wrong with Rin. She wasn't able to understand or explain her emotions well, so it took a while for her to get that she loves Hisao, the person who stuck with her to the end. Hisao also went through an arc of accepting her after expecting her to understand his feelings toward her, even though Rin had no obligation to do that. Now he will support her however he can, even if he can't understand her, because that's what's important. This route was as much about Rin as it is about how to interact with people like Rin. While it is true, Rin doesn't really fit the definition of what many consider to be a decent human being, such as being able to communicate, the fault is not with her, it is with these false expectations put on her. So what I am saying is gain some sympathy. I relate to Rin almost as much as I do for Hanako. It feels like my brain is wired differently to be unable to speak properly while everyone around me is much more fluent than I am. I constantly have to repeat myself and can never find the right words, which is why I prefer writing over speaking. When it comes to making videos for my YouTube channel, even though I am actively putting words and visuals into the video that I want others to see, because of the myriad of interpretations possible, I don't actually know what others get out of it. What interpretation do you have? Were you entertained? Did I make my point clearly? Those types of questions swirl in my head. This is made even harder in the process of making videos. I always have a detailistic view of the video I'm making it in a minute by minute scale, but never a whole picture view of it until the end, so I don't have full control over what the audience feels over the entire thing. Could it be boring or messy overall? So with all of these insecurities that I have and the complicated creative process, I am very happy that many of you at least enjoy what I've made. But there's still the worry about whether or not I've truly communicated to the audience what I wanted to say, and if anyone understands what I tried to say. It may never be possible to prove if I did truly communicate the message I had in my head through this video, and that's true anytime anyone communicates, really. This was sort of the reason why I was uh, pretty badly depressed for a while, and, and also the reason why I haven't been busy making videos for the last five months. I questioned myself if any of this was even worth it, even if I became successful, if it's even possible to gain a deep connection with my audience eventually. But thank God for cursing me with tons of free time and a hubris because it is in human nature to keep trying even if it's impossible. It is in human nature to be social and to not feel alone. That's why everyone still communicates, and in turn it will also be why I will still be creating these videos, even after being a little pussy ass bitch, a depressed crybaby about it. Reading Rin's route made me realize it is still worth trying to communicate even with my faults and the boundless miscommunications possible because everyone has the same troubles communicating, so you are never truly alone. 
But yeah, that is all I have to say about Rin's route, which is an insane amount of things to say, by the way. This video is much, much longer than I planned. I got almost 25,000 words, or two hours of things to say about her and her route. I guess that just proves how complex or unique of a character she is. So I realized I have more to say about Kato Shoujo than I do any other visual novel I've ever played, so I will do a retrospective of, of every route in Kato Shoujo annually. That is, if the plan goes off without a hitch. Next one will be Emmys, so look forward to that. Thank you for watching, consume everything, and goodbye.